good, Sammy, good. I couldn't drive a car. That's right. Yeah. Now I can drive a car. I drive the car here. Because I used to have problems raising this arm up. Really? I used to have problems. Now, now it goes up easy. I swing my arms now, and I hadn't for years. Head away, Sammy. Sammy, Steve, Deb, and everyone taking the rock steady classes here at Crown Boxing in Lansing are all fighting for control of their bodies, and it's thanks to boxing that they're getting some of it back. We take them through regular boxer training. Okay, I... But they do everything a boxer would do in terms of getting prepared for a match. 150 minutes a week of this type of training helps them build their balance, their endurance, their strength back, and helps them achieve many of the things that they have actually lost. What Parkinson's does is interferes with some of the uh, pathways in the brain. So people that had usual coordination that you don't think about moving both arms in sequence and so forth and so on goes away. And that's because some of the cells become non-functional and some just uh, function constantly. So instead of firing and shutting off, they just keep firing. Ted Zale and Ronald Horowitz heard how boxing was helping improve the lives of Parkinson's patients across the country and world and last October brought the program to Lansing. For Zale, it was a perfect fit because he comes from a family of boxers. His uncle, Tony Zale, was the middleweight champion from 1940 to 1948. And he developed Parkinson's late in his years. Uh, for his last three or four years of life, he didn't have the tremors that normally go with Parkinson's, but he lost the ability to swallow. And Horowitz, he's spent decades helping people. The retired doctor studied diseases for years at Sparrow Hospital. So the brain can continue learning throughout life and what we're teaching the brain to do for us is activities that we learn to do one way but now we have to learn the same activity a different way. I love it. It gives me a structured environment in which to deal with my Parkinson's issues. Sometimes I stutter step, my feet sort of stick and this has helped a lot. People have bad days. Mm -hmm. You come here in your group and the world seems right. All right, Dave. You're surrounded by brothers and sisters. We walk, we walk out of here sweating. Okay. They're in the ring with Parkinson's and the fight is far from over, but if you ask these folks, they've won a few rounds. They have to do something. This is the best way to fight it. You can battle that bag, that heavy bag, and hit it as hard as you want, and every time you hit it, you're hitting Parkinson's. It takes a special kind of mind to move freight mile after mile. I mean, I've always loved driving. Um, yeah, probably always will. <laughs> Richard Harris has been hauling goods for nearly 20 years. He says a lot has changed in the trucking industry since he first started, both serious and silly. And, and, to, and to our horns not as loud anymore, so like... Right. That's not as loud on the back in the day. You hit that horn, it was like, bah! <laughs> but he's changed too because truckers like Harris are now aware of a major problem deeply rooted in the trucking industry. Human trafficking is frequently found at truck stops. It is a problem, and it's a problem here in Michigan. And it's a crime Captain Michael Crum with the Michigan State Police has been working to stop for years. He says these locations are used by a transient customer base and is often hidden from view, providing enough enticement to bring in the pimps. Now, unfortunately, truck stops and areas where there's large populations of males are an attractant to these people that would do this to these uh, victims. This one was back in a truck lot and it didn't look typical. But the secrets, up, signs and symbols of human trafficking are hidden out. no more. In fact, more than 560,000 people are now TAT trained. It's exciting because we are truly raising up this almost invisible army of everyday heroes. Laura Cyrus is the operations manager for Truckers Against Trafficking, an awareness program educating drivers about the horror along the highways. It's really about changing the hearts and minds of an industry really that has been seeing this crime happening for a long time, but giving them the tools to understand what they're looking for. Cyrus says there are far more truckers than law enforcement on Michigan roadways, routinely stopping at places prone to women being pimped out. So by connecting truckers with the right information, it could save a victim's life. 
And the idea behind this is that these men and women, they're already well-trained, they're observant, they're vigilant, and they can absolutely provide an extra set of eyes and ears for law enforcement in recovering victims and having traffickers arrested. Getting TAT trained involves understanding the problem, what signs to look for, and phone numbers to call to report something suspicious. This simple method to stop human trafficking has mobilized many, some with great influence in order to stop these crimes. Making deliveries to people's homes. You know, this is Kristen Beck. Of... She's the North American Road Logistics modal leader with Dow Chemical, meaning she manages tens of thousands of workers connected to the trucking industry and was moved after getting TAT trained. When we learned about the program and we perused uh, their training platform, uh, we decided to make it a mandatory requirement for all of our service providers in North America. So that means truckers not just in Michigan, but across every state in the continental U.S. attached to Dow is aware and watching that may only get bigger. Eventually we'd like to take this global because it is a, a, a growing global crime uh, and we are a global company. It's not just truckers either. While working on ways to remove human trafficking from Michigan, Captain Crum was also impacted by watching a TAT training video a few years back in Iowa and sprang into action. So we contacted every truck stop in the state. We contracted every rest area. We partnered with MDOT and the Secretary of State to make sure that these Awareness videos and information uh, gets out and disseminated. The movement is working too. So far, 1,980 calls have been made to the national hotline by truckers. 557 cases have been generated, with 1,035 victims getting saved and identified. Stats that didn't exist before truckers against trafficking. And now that Harris knows what's at stake, he's happy to keep his eyes both on the road and for those who may need his help. If I had a family member that was, you know, got, you know, abducted or something like that, I would want people to be looking out for, for them, you know. I would hope people, if they seen something, they would call and, and say something, you know. I hated everybody. <laughs> I was jealous of everybody. It was just, there was no happiness in my life. I had no hope at all. The life Ken Jones leads now, cooking and serving at the City Rescue Mission, is very different from the one he had before. I used to make a lot of money, had the white picket fence, the big house, swim pool in the back, I had it all. Then his marriage failed. He started drinking, he became depressed, and he lost his job and home. I had nobody at all, and I was, I was terrified. I was thinking, you know, I'm gonna die under a bridge. But God had other plans, and the dash of hope came from just one person who saw his potential. You seen the good in me, I couldn't see it. And uh, just that little spark, you know, just started this, the ball rolling. This should be enough. We'll give him two a piece. I'm gonna cut up another cake just, okay. just in case. Ken says losing everything was the best thing that's ever happened to him because now he serves more than just himself. That's fine. Cool. And at the rescue mission, he dishes out comforting food, kindness, and conversation, hoping to be a beacon for others who've hit hard times. If you see someone that is having a tough time, he's going he's gonna to talk with them. His desire is to help them in the situation they happen to be in. So, so he's the same at work as he is outside of work. And, and I guess that's the real blessing, is that uh, God's really changed his heart and his life, and he's able to serve in a genuine way. Hey, Kelly, how you doing, brother? I'm doing good. Every single person has value. You say a kind word, just a smile or a handshake or something like that to them, it, it, it turns their whole day around. For five years, Ken has helped prepare and pass out many of the 500,000 meals offered here at the rescue mission during that time. Thank you, thank you, thank you. He's also worked alongside many volunteers and says they are also the reason he's standing here today. We're all set. You guys are my A team. <laughs> if you're despairing or you've lost hope or you think that there's no help out there, just reach out. You know, reach out to your church, reach out to your community, because there are people out in this city that are desperate to help you. I have peace of mind. I have a serenity and a peace and a love for other people now that I never experienced before in my life, ever. A long journey from hate 
to hope, to harmony. That's a good support. That's a good support. That's what I told him. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. I have been doing this 32 years. It was just a fun thing to do at Christmas. Beat the heck out of everything else I do for a living, which is all the sad things. Would you two boys come up here, please? Will you bring your brother, Nathaniel? You watch out for him, OK? That's what big brothers do. I'm guessing my estimate is in excess of 6,000. It's just when you think about it and when I say that, I stop and think, wow. To finally put the final piece of our family together is awesome. <laughs> We've been waiting for this day for a long time. From and after this date, his mommy and daddy are going to be Mark, Timothy Blakely, and Emily Bay Blakely. Nathaniel, give it a good hit. Good job. Good job. I, it's um, it's amazing, um, yeah. Would you come up here, please? It's been a long journey yes. through the system. People who adopt have gone through so much to get to this day. They've gone for a year, two years, in some cases more, to get to this point. So it's the culmination of a lot of hard work, but a lot of love. Keep it on. Do it. You're going to be, it'll be the greatest thing you have ever done in your life. And years from now, you will look back and say, that, what a blessing that was. Merry Christmas, everybody. And the Merry best Christmas. holiday. How can it not be? No. <laughs> this is it. This is the best. Good to see you all. Happy Halloween <laughs> uh, from Great Lakes Christian Home. Go that way. Thank you. Oh, 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 I love it. <laughs> like it? Yes, that was very nice. It's really cool. This is something they do, I think, almost every year. We have been here for 26 years, and they have been doing this pet parade walkthrough for 26 years. Happy Halloween. There are some very, very happy kids. The residents really enjoy it. They bagged up all the candy. There's a sense of excitement, and it's something that they can partic participate in. Hello to you, and a happy Halloween. All right. This is awesome. This is probably one of the best things I've seen in a long time. Well, it means a lot, because it's not very good weather to be out in to come <laughs> over here and say hi to us and, and bring us presents. Thank you. Some of them have grandchildren, some of them don't, and again, it's sort of a chance to join in the fun of being a kid again. We're grateful. We like intergenerational things. Um, it, it lets them know that everybody, are, everyone's just people. Um, whether they're old or young, and no matter what the color of their skin is, it brings them together. And that's why we are happy to have children. They're our future. Fly away home, ladybugs.